Hello everyone. Welcome to introduction to OpenAI GPT-4 model. Imagine an advanced AI that can understand and generate not only text, but audio and video as well. The GPT-4 model, where O stands for Omni, reflects its capability for handling multiple types of input and output seamlessly. Whether you are working with a text, image or audio, the GPT-4 model is designed specifically to integrate all these modalities into a single coherent experience. The GPT-4 model responds to an audio input almost in real time, which is similar to the human response time in a conversation. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn about all the features of the GPT-4 model. So, let us get started. Before GPT-4.0, users had to rely on multiple models to interact via text, audio, and video. But now, GPT-4.0 unifies all these capabilities into one powerful model. This new approach means that all your content, whether it is a written text or a spoken word or a visual content, are being processed by the same neural network. The GPT-4.0 model has the same high intelligence as the GPT-4 Turbo, but it is much more efficient. It generates text two times faster and 50% cheaper. Now, let's start building our first application using the GPT-4.0 model. Alright, let's get started and move to coding. The first step is to prepare our Jupyter Notebook. So, in this uh, tutorial, we have to install two libraries. OpenAI, of course, install or upgrade it if you have already installed OpenAI before. And the next uh, library is the python dash dot env. So we'll say the following pip install dash dash upgrade dash quiet open AI. Let's run the code. Next, we want to install python dash dot env to load the open AI API key from the environment variable. Now we want to load the OpenAI API key from the environment variable. I have already generated an OpenAI API key and I stored it locally in my computer in the same location as this Jupyter Notebook in a .env file. So we will say the following. Import OS to get access to the local files and then import OpenAI next from .env import load find then we'll say load find to tnv and override equal to true next we'll say os.environ.get open ai underscore api underscore key then we are going to print a message to the user in case the api key is loaded successfully We'll say os.environ.get open ai underscore api underscore key and the condition is not none. All right, let's run the code and we get the result api key loaded equal to which means that the open ai api key was loaded successfully. Now for testing our application, let's create a small application with uh, GPT-4.0. Here we'll say from open AI import open AI. Next we are going to create our client which is equal to open AI. For model we are going to use GPT-40. Now we'll say response is equal to client dot chat dot completions dot create. For model, we are going to use the model and for uh, messages, we are pa going to pass a dictionary of role. The first one is going to be the system role and the content is you are a sci-fi writer. Okay. 
and the user content write a short story about life on earth in the year 2124 okay let's run the code cell now and it is done now let's print the response so we'll say print response dot choices index zero dot message dot content a great it generated a short story about the life on earth in 100 years everything is working great In the first example, we are going to use text and image as input to the GPT-40 model. For this example, I'm going to use the Mona Lisa picture from Wikipedia. I have already saved the image locally. And in order to display the image, we have to use the IPython library. So if you don't have the IPython library, you have to install it. So we'll say pip install. Let's quiet. IPython. Next, we'll say the following from ipython.display, import, image, and display. Image underscore pass is equal to Mona Lisa underscore Lisa to JPEG. Okay. I have already saved this uh, picture in the same location as this Jupyter notebook. Next, we'll say display image image underscore pass and width i'm going to use let's say 600 equal 600 let's run the code and this is the image that we are going to send to gpt4 model along with the text prompt as well okay please note that gpt4 all expect images encoded using base 64 to provide uh, images uh, to gpt4 all as base 64 encoded we have to do the following steps so we will say import base 64 and we are creating a function here encode underscore image and image underscore pass and then now we are going to open the image image underscore pass in read mode and binary as image underscore file we'll say here image underscore binary underscore data is equal to image file dot read then we are going to return base 64 dot base 64 encoded encode image underscore binary underscore data dot decode utf-8 let's run the code so this code snippet defined a function called encode underscore image that takes an image file like jpeg or bng and converts it into a base64 string base64 is a way of representing binary file like images or audio using only text character this is very important because GPT-40 model expect images to be provided in this base64 format. Here we imported the base64 module from Python standard library. This module provides us with tool for working with base64 encoding and decoding. After that we uh, open the file in read binary mode and here we read the entire content of the opened image file into a variable called image binary data this variable image binary data is now holds the raw binary data representing the image after that here in base 64 the 64 encode image binary data this encodes the raw binary image data uh, into a base 64 string the result is a bytes uh, like object and then the decode utf8 decode the base64 bytes like object into a standard text that uses the utf8 character encoding 
And finally, we are returning the page 64 encoded string representation of the image. Alright, now let's use this function and build our first application. So we'll say base 64 underscore image is equal to encode image and we are going to pass the image path that we define above this one here the path to our uh, image okay now we will uh, create the system message system underscore message is equal you are an art expert next we will define the prompt which is equal to please describe this image now we will make a request to the chat completion api so we'll say response is equal to client dot chat dot completions dot create and for model we are going to specify the model that we define above which is gpt 40 for messages is going to be a dictionary of messages the first one for all we are going to use system and for content it's going to be the system uh, message next we are going to define the user message so we'll have here all user and here's the new part for the content we, we are going to have multiple types okay the first type is the text so type text and the value of the text is the prompt that we define define above the next type is the image so we'll have here type image underscore url and image underscore url is url which is going to be the data uri to embed the image directly within the request so this is where the base 64 image variable we define above uh, would go so we'll say f data image slash jpeg semicolon base 64 comma and here we are going to pass the base 64 image okay for temperature, we are going to use zero temperature. Let me just scroll up a little bit. So temperature is going to be equal to 0, 0.0. All right. Let's run the code and make sure everything is working fine. And it is done. Now let's print the response. So we'll say print response dot choices index zero dot message dot content and we get the response this image is a famous portrait paint known as the mona lisa it was created by italian artist leonardo da vinci okay so in this example we saw how we can now pass uh, multiple input to the gpt 40 and we pass a prompt as a text and an image and the image was stored locally in our computer all right In the second application here, we are going to use an online image. The user will ask a question about the historical significance of a specific image. And we are going to use the Pyramid of Giza image from Wikipedia. So we will say the following. Image underscore URL is equal to. And this is the URL of the image. And let us display it. So we'll say display image image underscore url and width is equal to 400 let's run the code this is the image that we are going to send as input to gpt40 okay let's now build the application so we'll say system underscore message is equal to you are an expert in ancient, in ancient history and for prompt is equal to what is the significance of this structure 
an ancient Egyptian history. Okay. Now we are going to make a request to the chat completion API. And let me just copy and paste the code from here just to save time. So if we copy this code. And here instead of passing the image as base 64, we are going to pass the image underscore URL. Okay. After we get the result, we'll say print response dot choices index zero here and then message dot content. Let's run the code and make sure everything is working fine. All right, and we get the response. So here, instead of using a base64 encoded image, we use an image URL and it was successful. It was uh, it responded with a description of the image. So that's it for now. We have learned how to use the Python API with GPT-4 Omni, the new flagship model from OpenAI that can reason across different modalities. And that's a wrap of our introductory dive into GBT for all model. We have just scratched the surface of what is possible with this incredible AI model. If you are looking for more advanced tutorial, please let me know in the comment down below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my upcoming AI tutorials. Until next time, keep exploring, keep creating, and let's push the boundaries of what's possible with AI.